I remember when I was, uh, when I was the channel changer for my dad. And I remember having to turn the channel and sitting down and watching Nixon on television. And I didn't really even understand what was going on. It was Watergate. And I remember the moment um, something changed, even as a little kid, something changed in me. And I think it changed in the whole country. I don't know this for sure, but I think it was a moment where we lost trust. We lost trust. It's um, been an amazing time. This, at least in my generation, this was the beginning of the loss of trust in our president. And it was a time when people started just to tune out, I think. The image of the president went blank. Then we went from that to Jimmy Carter. He wasn't any better. Uh, and from Carter, we went to Reagan. And, you know, I liked Reagan. I believe him on the Iran-Contra thing, but a lot of, half of America didn't believe him on the Iran-Contra thing. They think he knew. So we lost even more trust. Then we had George H.W. Bush. And then we had uh, Clinton, and we had to worry about the carpets being cleaned here in the Oval Office. And then George W. Bush, and, and now this president. It's been a tough few decades tough few decades, at least for the institution of the Oval. But America is losing trust. We're losing trust not only in the Oval Office, but in all of our institutions. There's a story today in the New York Times all about corruption. And it's got to be true that we're losing trust because it's in the New York Times after all. Let me read you part of what this uh, article said. What it said here is, the misconduct of the financial industry no longer surprises most Americans. Only about one in five has much trust in banks. According to Gallup polls, about half the level of 2007. And it's not just the banks that are frowned upon. It's trust in big business overall. It's declining. 62% of Americans believe corruption is widespread all across corporate America. 62%. According to, uh, according to Transparency International, this is a, um, an anti-corruption watchdog, nearly three in four Americans believe that corruption has increased in the last three years. That's 75% of us. We don't trust the institutions, and we think it's getting much worse. Whether it's corporate or government, they go hand in hand. I mean, why would we trust an administration or a government that hands over your hard-earned money that you paid in taxes to, quote, help people or build bridges or whatever, and they give them to big banks? And not just big banks in America, but big banks all around the world. I read this story today, and I, I see good news and bad news here. What made our country great was our ability to trust our own people. And we've gotten away from that. President Bush said, if you see something, say something. Well, that seemed reasonable enough at the time. Now I'm not sure that was so good. But then the Obama administration took it a step further. And it launched a website called Attack Watch. And it started dispatching truth teams designed, designed to get us to rat out our friends, our neighbors who might say negative things about the president. It's been in recent years that we've lost our faith in institution. But I think we still have faith in our neighbors, in hardworking Americans. I had a meeting here in this office with President Bush where he called me on the carpet. It's a nice carpet to be called on, but he called me on the carpet. I had, I had a meeting in here, and it was, it was intimidating. I mean, the whole room is designed to intimidate. That's what it's for. A couple of years later, I had a meeting in the Capitol with about 30 congressmen. I'd love to do that again, but I'm not really invited to speak to Congress anymore. 
But as I walked through the halls, I looked at the architecture and the artwork. You know that I'm a pretty visual guy. I mean, here in the Oval Office, when I first walked into the Oval, I noticed things like this. This is the, this could go all the way back to uh, Ben Franklin, uh, the legend of the uh, Indian chief that gave him the 13 arrows and said, put them all together, bind them together. You'll notice that they won't break. But it also can go back to ancient Rome. It can go back to the fascist uh, Rome, above the doors in the White House, on the sides of, uh, of the uh, House of Representatives as well. Now, here I am in the Capitol building, and I'm with a team of about four or five people, and I'm stopping the whole time, and I'm looking at the ceiling patterns. I'm admiring the detail everywhere, and it was overwhelming. But the people that I was with could really, I mean, they, they couldn't care less. They were rushing me along. So I wasn't late to the meeting, and I got into this meeting, and once I was there, I asked all the congressional members, I said, can, can anybody tell me about the ceiling pattern here? Can anybody tell me about the logo on the elevator doors? What are the symbols on the handrails? None of them knew. Most of them never even took the time to notice. The entire building, I explained to them, is built to make me feel small and you to feel powerful. That's dangerous. Even the architecture is made to forget, make you forget about principles and focus on the inflated self-worth, focus on the seat of power. That's not good. I told you last week how I was in a tiny town in the Mountain West. It was a town of about 426 people, I think it was. Uh, but there's a big town right down the street, about 25 minutes away from there, and that town, I think, has 457 people. And I was in both of those towns, and uh, I noticed one thing. Both downtown are pretty sparse. I mean, it reminded me of where I grew up. There are lots of tiny mom-and-pop stores lining the streets. But the one thing I did notice in both towns, each one had one building, and they were on the corner, and they were big, big, huge, federal-looking buildings. Iconic structures, walls really thick and big. These buildings weren't like any of the others on the block or in the entire town. Each one had one of these buildings, and the architecture screamed, we are here to stay, we're steady, we're safe, we're big. But it was an illusion, because those buildings were now empty. One of them was empty, and one of them, I think, was like a coffee shop. Those buildings were banks. The such-and-such such trust carved into stone. But that trust had faded. Now they were just words, barely visible, etched above a doorway because they had either abandoned their principles or, or things had changed and they had gone out of business. Lasting principles need to be restored. Principles that restore trust. That is what I'd like to hear the president talk about. That is the theme of tonight's Oval.